Hey, what is up guys? Mr. The Reverts here, and we are hours away from weekend two of the Black Ops 4 beta. And as you guys already know, there's a lot of stuff that's gonna be different. And last night around 12 o'clock midnight, Treyarch posted the patch notes for everything in weekend two. So today, in this video, we are gonna be covering all of that stuff. And I'm also gonna give you guys some of my added input. So we have a lot of stuff to cover, and let's just jump straight into this here. So first off, for general fixes, this is pretty much some of the miscellaneous backend stuff that's pretty much technical stability and performance fixes. Um, but they say here matchmaking optimization pass fixes to reduce a number of network disconnects. Uh, I know for me personally, I must have disconnected like I'd say about five times during the beta. It was very annoying sometimes during games, sometimes uh, when the game was about to end too. So I wouldn't get that XP. Super, super annoying. So hopefully I don't get to experience that during the beta. Uh, for weekend two and then also here resolve several hitches that were occurring during gameplay resolved a number of ui errors that were occurring in the front end menus fixed numerous crashes slash freezes fixed for scoreboard scores and fraction and faction icons sometimes getting flipped during kill camps for the maps performance optimization pass across all maps address several collision bugs across all maps address many gameplay impacting issues like bad lines of sights across all maps so again this is pretty much just the technical stability and performance stuff uh, not really too much I can go into detail there mainly because I don't really know all that technical stuff um, but yeah it's there for you guys just know that the connection and that work, that kind of stuff is gonna be better for the lobby timer they have reduced the match start timer to 70 seconds and they kind of go into a bit of a description here on why they chose that so they say this timer is longer than usual right now to accommodate map preloading in the lobby which has been added to allow players players to spend more time on create a class customization, score streak selection, and more, rather than spend that time on a static loading screen. We're aware that there are still cases where this isn't working consistently as it should, and we're working on it. So, uh, honestly, I really don't mind the timer being this long, guys. I really, really don't. Again, it just adds a lot more time for you for you to customize your classes, your loadouts, and like I said, I, I really don't mind that long of a wait. Um, it really doesn't feel that long to me, honestly, though. But I mean, hey, I'm all for it. Um, maybe it could be reduced just a little bit lower, a, a tad bit lower, like maybe 40 seconds. A timer would be great, but I mean, still, I don't have a problem with it being 70. Like that's completely fine by me. And then next up here they have addressed an issue with the lobby's timer restarting to the full time if too many players leave um, now when the lobby timer is below 10 seconds and players leave slash join the timer will only reset to 10 seconds for the player feedback they've reduced the amount of flash on screen at the moment of taking damage we've reduced the darkness and duration of the damage flash and when players take damage we are working to find the right balance between making sure players understand every time they they take that damage and keeping the screen clear for gameplay this is this is continued work in progress and uh, I I really don't understand exactly what they're talking about there because I haven't had that happen to me if it has then I really haven't noticed it so uh, apparently that's an issue that's going to be fixed here and looked into some a bit more um, for the movement here this is where a lot of people are going to be happy they've reduced the default jump height so the default jump height was really really high i'm gonna throw a graphic on screen for you guys if i can find one from my other video i posted uh from my week one review the default jump height was super super high now they have reduced it and they've also added tuning to scale down the jump height on subsequent jumps to prevent bunny hopping which was a big issue for weekend one so bunny hopping is going to be a little bit reduced now for weekend two of the beta and then they've also reduced the default slide speed and then the default slide distance so uh, that's pretty good there. Now for the spawns, they've adjusted domination spawn logic to ensure that players spawn more frequently near objective spawn points owned by their team. For the gear, body armor. They fixed a bug where explosive damage was not damaged was not damaging body armor or the player wearing it. They have addressed an issue where players wearing body armor had no flinch when taking damage. And I had a discussion with my friend about this earlier tonight, and uh, I was bringing up the point that maybe people thought that body armor would be would give the player the user. Uh, 
pretty much every time they'd win the gunfight because they would not take any flinch damage or something along those lines so I don't know that that's an issue that I never realized at all during the beta so uh, hopefully that's gonna make a big difference come weekend two and then here players wearing body armor is now dealt a percentage of damage rather than the body armor blocking full damage so that's that's a pretty decent little uh, nerf right there and then here, killing a player with body armor now awards an additional 25 score per EKIA. So if you kill a guy that's wearing body armor, then you're going to earn 25 plus score. So uh, I really like that, actually. It kind of rewards the player who uh, who kills a guy using body armor. And, and yeah, I just like that all around. It gives you some more incentive to uh, try to seek out those players wearing the body armor and kill them. For the ComSec device, they further reduce the cost to earn score streaks with ComSec device for the following and they are the rcxd the uav the care package the counter uav the attack chopper schaefer and strike team gunship for both the standard heal and stem shot heal the time to full health has been sped up with an increase to the heal cooldown time so both the standard heal in the game and the stem shot have gotten a big buff but uh, i'm not entirely sure how much they sped up with the uh the increase to heal cooldown time not entirely sure about that um but yeah we'll see what happens happens when uh, when we play the game come today for the equipment charge all equipment will charge faster with this gear uh, for the perks dead silence they've increased dead silence effectiveness versus acoustic sensor by reducing the ranges at which acoustic sensor sensor can detect a player with dead silence for flak jacket they reduce explosive damage protection so flak jacket got a little bit of a nerf there for cold-blooded they reduce the delay that AI will take before recognizing a cold-blooded player by a little bit over 50% you'll need to take cover a bit more quickly when enemy AIs are roaming. I really do like the sound of that because uh, the kill streaks in the game are already pretty bad, but uh, if you had cold blooded on, then uh, pretty much the, the score streaks were just unusable. So uh, they have nerfed cold blooded a little bit more, and I really like the fact that you'll have to take cover a bit more quickly when there are enemy AIs roaming around, so like the dog, the mantis, etc. Um, for dexterity, they've increased the weapon hip speed while mantling and they've also reduced slide duration so it kind of got a little bit of a, a little bit of a nerf and a buff there for ghosts they've decreased the time that you are protected by ghost after you stop moving for tactical mass they've reduced the amount of resistance to nine bang concussion reactor core and fire for tracker they've increased the duration footsteps remain in the world so tracker sounds like it's going to be a very very uh, helpful perk to use even more helpful than it was i use tracker on all my classes i think tracker uh, is one of the best perks in the game so uh, i i like to use that a lot on, on all my classes now guys for the equipment this is pretty interesting and they say we'd like to see the balance of gunplay versus equipment tilt a little bit further to the gunplay side so we are increasing the equipment cooldown rates across the board this will make each equipment use more impactful while also leading to less equipment spam and uh, so they're basically just going to be nerfing the equipments a bit more they're going to make them a little bit longer to or a, li a little bit harder to get in the game and, and yeah so we're gonna have to wait and see what happens i feel that a lot of the equipment in the game though uh really did take a while to get so i don't know i'm not too big of a fan on that part but we'll have to try and see how it all plays out for the combat axe they lower the cooldown time and then all other equipment cooldowns are longer across the board for the frag grenade increase inner and outer damage to match cluster grenade damage for the nine bang increased stun radius and also they decrease the fire delay for the tack deploy they've reduced the positive influence on the tack deploy this will allow players spawning on the tack deploy to have a better chance at spawning in safer conditions when possible and they've also reduced the time that attack deploy is active to 25 seconds and then uh, here the tack deploy will now have a maximum cap of 10 spawns once 10 players have used the attack deploy it will self-destruct so the attack deploy kind of got a nerf there uh, and I feel it was a much needed nerf because the attack deploy could really just 
totally changed the game in favor for the other team that uh, was using it. If, if you had a good player that knew what they were doing with attack deploy, uh, then it pretty much was a lock. Literally, you were almost guaranteed a win if you could uh, control the spawns. I even had a specialist guide on the attack deploy for Seraph, but I guess I'm not going to post it now because the uh, attack deploy did get pretty much changed up completely. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to redo that video. And then for the reactor core, they increased the damage distance. That, that's pretty cool. I feel the reactor core was, uh, wasn't was really all that good. I'm not a big fan of Firebreak anyway, so maybe I'll start to use them a bit more now. And then moving on to the specialist here for Ajax. Despite his potential game-changing ballistic shield, Ajax has been underperforming in gameplay. To help him out, we further increase his movement speed while using the ballistic shield in both standard and fortify ADS modes. And uh, this should provide an overall smoother experience and relieve some of the frustrations of feeling too much too sluggish and then here for ruin players are flocking to ruin thanks to his extreme mobility and best play worthy grab slam we've bumped up his grab slam cooldown time to help focus usage and make sure everyone has a nice day that's pretty funny there and now moving on to fire break reactor core can be very hit or miss equipment causing big plays or something ending in a fruitless death we're bumping up his damage to provide more consistency and help fire break hold his ground his purifier also has a bit more feel to keep those heartwarming flames firing longer so fire break was really needed of a big big buff so uh, i'm happy he's getting the love he deserves um for torque torque can definitely be a thorn in the enemy side however he's still not up to uh, snuff with the other specialists to make him the true master of his domain we've increased the duration of his barricade and improved damage on its microwave field this should make torque more effective at blocking routes providing cover and getting kills so torque got a pretty big buff um i had a, a, a specialist guide on torque too and some of the advice and tips i gave in that specialist guide were pretty helpful i feel so if you guys want to go watch that there's going to be a link to it down below and then moving on to profit here profits tempest needed a bit more uh oomph they say to bring it up to the level of our other specialist weapons which i do 100 percent agree with to start with we're decreasing the its cooldown time so players can earn it faster in addition we've made its ads move speed slightly faster to help players line up those shots so profit definitely did need a big big buff and then for nomad one man's best friend is another's worst enemy and it turns out that nomad's dog juno is a force to be reckoned with definitely we've slowed down her sprint speed and she'll now play with boots paws on the ground like the rest of us that's pretty funny uh the dog is actually a female i, I never knew that but juno is a female confirmed these changes should also prevent her from launching into an aerial assault when running up a slope surface we'll miss the memes juno was definitely a, a very nice little meme in the cod community i remember seeing uh, nade shot tweet out a video of the dog just launching herself off the map that, that was pretty funny there uh the map uh, juno was it was just so fast the dog would sprint across the map super super fast so uh, that's good that they slowed down her sprint speed and then moving on to the score streaks the score streaks like i said many many times are horrible in black ops 4 so uh, let's see what they have done here for score streaks the progress bar is no longer resetting between domination rounds that's always a good plus to have um for the lightning strike uh, explosive damage and radius increase the tablet will now sweep for enemy positions in the fog of war when first used i definitely agree that should happen uh, for the hellstorm cluster bomb lock on radius increase for the sentry health increase and and it also can be placed while sprinting for the strafe run they have uh tuned the pathing a bit because uh the strafe run was just horrible i think it was one of the worst kill streaks to use in the game uh, but they've also have reduced the cost so that's pretty good there and then also for the strike team the default cost has been increased the weapon accuracy has been increased behavior updates to seek out enemies more quickly and then they've also increased the health per squad member so the strike team got a pretty big buff 
Um, for the gunship, uh, they have reduced the cost. And then here for the Mantis, the health has been increased, the damage has been increased, the move speed has been increased, and then behavior changes to seek out enemies more quickly. Uh, the Mantis sounds like it's going to be pretty dang solid come the uh, come the beta today, so I can't wait to use that. And then for the attack helicopter, behavior changes to seek out enemies more quickly. So in general, all the score streaks got a pretty big buff. It seems like uh, the cost has been reduced on a lot of those. So yeah, the score streaks were a pretty big concern that I had for weekend one, and I'm glad they pretty much do seem usable for weekend two. And like I said, I can't wait to use them uh, for the weapons. The SMG for the GKS, the the ADS recoil reduced for increased ADS accuracy. The hip fire speed reduced for increased hip fire accuracy, and then they've improved the high damage range, and then they've also improved the ammo pool. For the Cordite SMG, they increased the weapon recoil, and then for the extended mag attachment, they've improved the bullet gains. And then for the Spitfire, they increased the weapon recoil, they've reduced the ammo pool. For fast mags, improved and standardized the reload speeds. For extended mags, improved bullet gains. So the Spitfire got a bit of a nerf there uh, with the added recoil and then the reduced ammo pool. For the MX-9, they increased the weapon recoil, so the MX-9 got a nerf. For the uh, ICR-7, which is an AR, the ADS in speed has been improved. They improved the movement speed while aiming down sights, and then the improved movement speed while firing in ADS. So the ICR got a little bit of a, of a buff there. For the Rampart 17, they improved the ADS in speed, they improved the movement speed while ADS, and then improved the movement speed while firing in ADS. For the Maddox, they increased the ADS in speed, they, impro they improved the movement speed while ADSing, and then they improved the movement speed while firing in ADS. For the stock attachment, they improved movement speed while ADS. Now for the CAN 47, they improved ADS in speed, they increased high damage range, they improved movement speed while ADS, and then uh, improved movement speed while firing in ADS. And then for the stock attachment, improved movement speed while ADSing. For the Vapor XKG, they improved ADS in speed, added a higher damage a uh, short range, and then improved movement speed while ADSing, improved movement speed while firing in ADS, and then for the stock attachment, they improved movement speed while ADSing, and then the bayonet slightly reduces, slightly had a reduced range. Um, for the Titan LMG, they improved the hip fire accuracy, they improved the movement speed while ADSing, they improved movement speed while firing in ADS, and then for the stock, they improved movement speed while firing in ADS. For the Mog 12, they slightly increased the one hit kill range, so the Mog 12, which uh, was a heavy concern by the COD community, got a, a little bit of a buff there by the increased one hit kill range. And then for the SG-12, the extended mags improved bullet gains. For the launcher, the Hellion Salvo, they increased the ADS in speed, they improved the race time, and then improved the drop time. For the ABR-223, the extended mags, they improved bullet gains. And then uh, for the Kashaka Sniper, quick draw, they slowed ADS in time. For quick draw 2, they slowed ADS in time as well. And then for the speed center, increased precision aim crosshair size. And then next up here for the Paladin H850, uh, fixed for left arm, taking less damage than the right arm. Not really all too sure what that means. I, I honestly haven't tried sniping in the Black Ops 4 beta because I feel that they are going to mess around with snipers. So why try and learn to snipe in quick scope when uh, it, it's just going to get completely just worked around. So haven't really used the snipers, but uh, yeah, that's what happened with them. And yeah, this is all the patch notes in the Black Ops 4 beta for weekend two. I know it's a whole lot. I know it came super, super late, uh, but I mean, it's here. It's finally here. A lot of this stuff that was fixed is stuff that I have personally and many others in the COD scene have highlighted. And it really does seem like Treyarch is listening. It really, really does. Um, kind of sad though, the beta did not go live yesterday as we all kind of expected it to go. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. Uh, I, guys, I just want you to know I'm super, super passionate about Call of Duty this year. I, I really don't understand why exactly though. Maybe it's because uh, Call of Duty has had this negative stigmatism around them for years now. And I just want to see Call of Duty succeed. I want to see Call of Duty reach the number one position in the gaming scene once again. Uh, I know it definitely does have the potential. And with Black Ops 4, 
it's there it is there the tools just need to be there everything just has to lines up perfectly i have a lot of passion for this game when i played the beta the very first few games that i played i immediately fell in love with this game i have again a lot of passion and a lot of uh, a lot of praise to goes out to Treyarch for just being so clear with us and just for making this beta really, really enjoyable. Again, there are some issues that need to be fixed, but again, Treyarch, you guys are listening. I have to give you guys some props. I really, really do. Uh, I'm going to be covering a lot of stuff throughout the beta this week, guys. I'm going to be covering some more specialist guides and uh, some other tips and tricks that I have planned. I don't want to reveal my secrets entirely because I want to save that for the uh, release date of Black Ops 4, but you guys are going to be in for some real treats for videos. Again, I love each and every one of you guys. I appreciate it. All the support and if you could I really would appreciate if you could leave a like on the video and just your overall thoughts about this update in the Black Ops 4 beta if you are playing by the time you watch this video then tell me your thoughts about the game so far I really want to know what you guys have to say about this down below in the comments and yeah thanks for watching guys I know it's a long video I'm gonna cut it off here uh, if you're watching up to this point thank you so much for that for that I appreciate it and yeah till next time I'll see you later